20 years and this year I had the opportunity to visit Gaza. I went to Gaza in July with a project called the Hands Up Project. I saw the poverty, I saw the overcrowdedness and I saw the camps and the terrible economic conditions caused by the occupation. I worked with teachers and kids in Gaza, linking up every week, learning English, sharing stories. It was amazing to meet some of the teachers and the kids from the project when I went to Gaza. Today, I don't know where most of those teachers are or if they're even alive. I don't know if the kids I work with are alive because up to now, Israel has murdered over 11,000 children with thousands more under the rubble and has dropped tons of explosives on Gaza equivalent to 1.5 times the force of the bomb dropped in Hiroshima, Japan in World War II. That's 11,000 children who once had dreams to grow up to be doctors, teachers, footballers, engineers and good citizens killed in cold blood when the American bombers struck their civilian homes. Palestinian kids are some of the most creative, inventive, empathetic, steadfast and resilient children I have ever worked with in my whole career as a teacher. They strive to tell the world their stories, they strive to be connected to the outside world and they strive for peace and justice. Everyone and everything is a target in Gaza, but most of all, children are a target in Gaza. Gazan children suffer some of the most highest rates of depression and anxiety and mental illness because of the constant bombings, the siege and the denial of basic human rights. Today, the head of UNICEF said that Gaza is the most deadliest, dangerous place to be a child in the whole world. Imagine that. Gaza is the most dangerous place at the moment to be a child. And even those children that survive face the most unimaginable trauma for the rest of their lives. Israel terrorizes children while they're sleeping. They terrorize children while they're playing. They terrorize children by taking away their parents, their families, their loved ones, and their friends. Over 9,000 children have had to have limbs amputated over the past, over recent weeks on the aggression. And a thousand of those had to endure that operation without any anesthesia. When I was there in Gaza, I saw that trauma in people's eyes. I heard the stories of destruction, bombing, death, murder. I spoke to kids who have nightmares every night and adults who have ongoing mental distress, PTSD, because of the constant attacks by Israel. I spoke to teachers who deal with these problems every day with kids in their class, as well as looking after their own families. My friends in Gaza don't know if they're going to live tomorrow. They, don't, they can't comfort their kids anymore. They sit huddled in one room with neighbours, family, and anyone else who needs shelter, absolutely terrified. Most are now homeless, in schools, or in tents. Beit Hanun in the north was a town I visited. Beit Lahia also. I went to the Big Ride Cycle Park. I don't know if any of you know the Big Ride for Palestine. We raised money for a cycle park in Beit Lahia. That town has almost been flattened. And the school where I do my English lessons every week is completely gone. The beautiful Islamic University, when I went to a conference there, has completely gone, completely been bombed. I just want to read you a little poem by a child from our project, the Hands Up Project. Every year we do a poetry competition. And I want to read you a poem by Abida Mohammed Abu Oda, age 14. Abida was killed within two weeks of the aggression on Gaza. And he was one of the winners of our poetry competition. I just want to read you his poem. I always dream of a life clear as the serenity of the sky and a heart beating with love and optimism. Why do our smiles not bloom like the flowers? 
Let us fly freely as those butterflies, satisfied, colourful and flying sky high, away from the worries and anxieties and the sorrows of war. So what can we do? Turn your anger into action. Take to the streets. Write to your politicians, the media. Gaza wants political action. Gaza wants a ceasefire. Gaza needs a ceasefire. And we won't stop until there is a permanent ceasefire. And justice for Palestine, justice for Abida, and justice for all the kids that I work with in Gaza. Free Palestine. about the moral argument. That's why we're here in the first place. Use these stories to anger you. Use them to fuel you. We've been here. Barclays know why we're here. They already know why we're here because it's not the first time. We've been doing it for years. We've made them know. They know we'll be back. We'll keep coming back for as long as they have these ties. Now, we're going to move and do a little march through Manchester because it's just not Barclays who need to know. The entire of Manchester need to know why we're out today and why we'll continue to be out today. Use this anger, use this sadness, it will fuel you into action because it's not going to stop us. We have no choice but to continue to be more active, to find out about what's happening locally, to get more wins than we've already done until Palestine is free. Let's keep the energy up. We look after each other. We should have said this at the start, but the police do not look after us. The UK state is clearly failing. We know where their priorities are. We look after each other on the march. If anything's happening, check in on each other, stay together. We are, we are, we secure each other, not the police. Do not speak to them, even if they're in the blue bib. We will look after each other. Let's march through, let's use our voices, and let's use this as a platform for further action. Free, free! Free, free, free! Just say really quickly, there's just these glasses on the bench there, if they're yours. Just make sure to come and take them. Free, free! 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 Free!